I got worked on. Uh, but more recently, I want to chat a little bit about some of the things that I think continue to be priorities for me and I think for this district. Certainly one of the biggest priorities was mentioned by Representative Lee is health care and the work that we've done. I've been at the forefront of this discussion here in Allegheny County in southwestern Pennsylvania as it relates to the UPMC Highmark controversy back in uh, about five or six years ago working then with Governor Corbett and also with the folks from UPMC and Highmark and Senator Don White helped hammer out the original agreement that came out of that conversation and followed up consistently speaking out publicly and on the Senate floor about the need for these two folks to get together. In fact, worked on legislation with my colleagues to be able to push that to happen. We need to continue to be able to do that. We also spoke, when I was leader of the Senate Democratic Caucus, we made a priority of the Medicaid expansion program that covers 700,000 folks. And we're gonna to continue to protect the Affordable Care Act because we think it's important. In fact, we believe we should be implementing our own Affordable Care Act here in Pennsylvania. We've already started that with the state exchange, but there's more we can do to protect, to make certain that these times, like we're in right now, we have the opportunity to protect Pennsylvanians as it relates to their ability to access a good quality, affordable health care. And that's what we're going to continue to talk about, not only for our adults, but also for our children as well. The other area I want to talk a little bit about is investments in education. I've been at the forefront of those conversations and been able to push for restoration of over a billion dollars. But to me, the most important dollars we spend are in early learning, childcare, child care, and early learning dollars are the best thing that we can do in terms of our resources. And we're going to continue to fight for that. And being able to have a seat at the table with the administration to be able to do that is going to be important for us. We also need to address the cost of higher education. And I think that's something we need to talk about as we go forward, most importantly. Uh, the environment is something I know we need to talk about. And there's been some conversations about uh, the work that's being done in that space. And the reference earlier by my opponent about resources that I've received from uh, individuals uh, throughout, over the years. Uh, implying, I suspect, that that would persuade me to vote a certain way. Let me be clear, like Summer Lee and Representative Franklin and Ganey, I voted against House Bill 1100, probably one of the most seriously damaging environmental piece of legislation we can have. Not only did I do it once, I did it twice. And more importantly, now that the governor has now vetoed it, I pledge to the governor that I will make certain that our caucus stands behind him 100% and making certain that we don't override his veto. So that'll put the, an end to this conversation. But also in the area of environmental conversation, I need to talk a little bit about the work that I've been doing along with Governor Wolf on the REGI program, Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, to ensure that we take steps to be able to protect our environment, to allow Pennsylvania to be able to join a consortium of states, or states to be able to work to combat emissions across this commonwealth. Those are some of the things we're working on. I've had the experience over the course of years in this space, over the number of years, I've received 100% voting record from all the environmental groups that are present. Recently, I've been endorsed by the Conservation Voters of Pennsylvania, as well as Clean Action Water and many others. Those are important areas that we're going to continue to work on. Representative Franklin spoke a little bit about the work we've been doing together in the hate crimes area, along with it, Representative Ed Ganey. But we're going to continue to fight for those programs. And we're also going to continue to push for resources to protect our communities, whether they be faith-based or whether they be organizations that are looking out and fighting for men and women in this commonwealth who some, oftentimes are the subject of, of discrimination and hate. That's why we were able to together, he and I made certain that we were able to get $5 million this past year coming to our communities across the state with more than 15% coming into the senatorial district, the 43rd district, an unprecedented amount for one district. These are the type of things that I'm able to do by being in a leadership position that I hold as Democratic leader in the Senate, I want to continue to be able to do. Finally, the area of social justice reform and criminal justice reform. Back in September of 2018, myself and Representative Ganey and Wheatley and Dan Miller stood on those courthouse steps, calling for many changes that need to take place as it relates to how we are training our police officers, how are we dealing with prosecution of individuals, how we define the use of, use of force in our commonwealth, specifically deadly force. But those were a series of bills that we introduced and I introduced in the Senate to be able to be in that conversation in Harrisburg along those lines. And we met some resistance, you can imagine by whom, but at the end of the day, we're gonna to continue to be able to push those measures forward. So whenever there's been opportunities for Senator, me, we're a little past our, our three I minutes apologize. now. I would appreciate the support of the 14th Ward Independent Club. All right, let's 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 see if we have any questions for Senator Costa. Uh, we'll give it a, a minute. Um, it looks like Greg's got a question. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, hi. Um, I, I thank you for your environmental support, especially the, the votes on HB 1100. Um, but I wonder if you could talk about uh, sort of over incarceration a little bit. I mean, that's, it's especially relevant this this month because prisons are great places for viruses to just run wild. 
um, yes. what are we or should we be doing to try to get keep fewer people in prison? Than we are currently right now to address the virus. We are doing things at the county level. Yesterday morning, we had a lengthy conference call with Secretary Wetzel about some of the steps that he's taken and working with him to be able to to be able to get folks out of the state prisons uh, and back into the community. We certainly have to have a community uh, structure in place to be able to receive these individuals to make certain they have as best they can housing, most importantly. Certainly on the job front, it's gonna be able to be difficult, but we have to do more steps along those lines. But as it relates to the long-term conversation, we have to decriminalize many of the things that we're talking about, particularly, for example, marijuana, and I support some of those measures. But we also have looked at over the years, different types of ways in which we could drive individuals not necessarily to a state correctional system, but rather into programs where we supported those type of programs, uh, alternative places they can go, whether it be drug related to drug, tra drug treatment, for example, or other types of treatment programs, mental health treatment programs. We've developed a number of specialty courts over the years that I've worked with when I was chairperson of the Judiciary Committee, mental health specialty court, drug and alcohol specialty court, veteran specialty court. There's more that we need to do along those lines. More importantly, in my tenure as Judiciary Chair, Chairman, I had the pleasure of serving about 12 years on the uh, Pennsylvania Sentencing Commission where we relaxed a number of measures. And during my tenure on the Judiciary Committee, uh, never once did we support mandatory minimums. My colleague, Senator Stuart Greenleaf, that every bill that came over from the House, we stripped out mandatory minimums because we know they weren't working, they weren't working, they weren't effective, and that's something we should do. These are the type of things that I think we need to continue to do. Figure out ways to get folks treatment and different types of programs to allow them to be back in our community, in our society, it has to be done with aftercare and follow-up care. And most importantly, when we get through the virus conversation, that there'll be, off, there'll be opportunities for them to gain work and gain housing. Okay. We have two more uh, questions in the queue here. So let's, let's do those and then we'll, we'll move on. Uh, Michelle? Yes, hi. Um, so Jay, I was wondering if you are reelected, if you would be willing to sit down with your opponent and, uh, dialogue with him about seeing what ideas of his you can incorporate um, as senator, because I, I would love to see collaboration and cross-fertilization of ideas. So I'm wondering uh, how you would feel about that. Well, absolutely. I'd be happy to sit down with Bill or any other folks in any other organization that we may not see eye to eye on, on some issues or, or have similar ideas. I'm happy to be able to do that. I mean, Yes, folks in Harrisburg and in our community outside of maybe the 14th Ward, you'll learn that people view me as someone who's a consensus builder, someone who understands how to, to advance things through the legislative process. We've been in a minority in the state center for like you know, 48 out of 50 years. And uh, to be able to get things done, you have to be able to work with folks and understand some of the things that need to be done. So more than happy to be able to sit down with Bill or anyone else uh, going forward on these type of things. Uh, Mark. Yeah, let's, let's hear yeah. your question. Yeah, question on bail. Are there efforts in the Senate to make it statewide that people who are tossed, who, are, who have been arrested for non, uh, of, of, uh, offenses were, were, were that? Technical violations and the like? Yeah rather than tossing them in tossing them in jail and keeping them there just because they don't have money for bail doesn't like sound sound like a, a good use of the resources that we have it's not a good use of the resources that we have and as, as our prison systems are stretched to the max we need to take steps to be able to recognize that I believe as I looked at some of the folks who were released from the Allegheny County Jail for example and the work that they had done there uh, through the courts uh, that's something that I think we need to continue to do as it relates to statewide effort, I know that there have been conversations, there have been hearings uh, in some of the committees along those lines, but we're trying to advance those measures as we speak in Harrisburg among the Senate Democratic Caucus. I believe as my colleague, Senator Vincent Hughes, and has legislation along those lines. I also had the privilege of serving on a, a, a panel at the University of Pittsburgh Institute of Politics where we discussed these very specific issues with respect to bail uh, and also things, the, the risk assessment that needs to be done by our courts uh, on a regular basis. So, uh, those type of things that came out of that recommendation need to be implemented not only further in Allegheny County at, at different levels, but also as we go forward statewide. I'm very supportive of those measures to be able to do that. Great. Um, I think I think that was our last question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would appreciate very much uh, your support. Uh, 
uh, the endorsement of the 14th Ward Independent Club. Uh, growing up in that community, I know how important it is. So thank you very much.